video that demonstrates the process of importing a uh, circuit board designed in uh, Eagle to Chili Pepper and then how Chili Pepper will then take that design and automatically generate toolpaths and G-codes so you can mill them out on your CNC router. My CNC router is a Shapoko 2 with an X-Carve upgrade and it's driven by a tiny G. So here's the process. Um, actually before I show you the process I wanted to show you the differences in the boards that I've created. If I show you this board here this is a board using a traditional 0.1 millimeter V-bit um, with the PCB to G-code uh, script that's embedded that you can install into Eagle. As you can see here, nice circuit, works pretty well, although my settings weren't perfect because there's still a little bit of copper left in the, uh, in the portions of the copper that were removed. In any case, it still works fine. But takes a little bit of work and from time to time there are failures There's a little bit more process in getting this to work. I was hoping that maybe I could use the uh, Eagle Board Import widget in Chili Pepper to make a better board and faster. And guess what? Here's the results of that. As you can see, a much nicer cut. You can see everything's nice and clean. All of the traces are well defined. You can even see where there are hexagonal uh, cuts versus round pad cuts. So, needless to say, using the uh, Eagle Board Import widget in Chili Pepper um, was very successful. And this board, by the way, is a import out of the box without any special configuration. I basically took um, the basic settings and uh, let me show you the process. It's actually pretty nifty So here's my Eagle design. This is actually a uh, Hall effect limit sensor that I've installed on my uh, on my Shapoko um, Works really good. I used the Shapoko to actually mill the circuit. It was milled with a v-bit I haven't uh, I haven't installed one with the new process yet, but I've, going forward. I certainly will now, the first thing you have to do with your board once you're ready to um, import it into Chili Pepper is first you have to create a mirror of the board. And the reason for this is because Chili Pepper is not completed. The widget, I should say, the Eagle Board widget uh, development will actually create a mirror of what you import it into. So what you're going to do is create a mirror so that it creates the proper, um, the proper circuit. Um, on my very first run, I ended up with this circuit, and as you can see, this is the circuit, but the problem is, is that it's actually a mirror of this circuit, because remember, Eagle, Eagle gives you the perspective as if you're looking through the top of the board to the bottom of it, so in this case, this is not the right circuit. As a matter of fact, if I show you these three circuits, here's the difference. Here's the circuit I cut with a V-bit. Here's the circuit I cut with chili pepper without mirroring the board. And here's the circuit with mirroring the board and then having chili pepper cut it. Essentially, right now, chili pepper creates a mirror of whatever you import. So you have to create a mirror so that it cuts a mirror of the mirror. A little confusing, but here's the process I'll show you. And it works great. So, first thing you do, you go to your board, you go and you look for a script that's installed in your default Eagle install. By the way, I'm running Eagle 7.5. And you look for a um, ULP script called Mirror Board. Double click it, and instantly your board is mirrored. And as you can see right here, it mirrored everything, even the wording, everything is backwards. It's okay, you're only gonna use this for the milling process. You don't need to keep this long term. So the next thing you want to do is you want to do a file, save as, okay, because you don't want to save it as your default board because at some point you're going to get rid of this. Now I've already gone through the process once, but I'm going to save it again just so you can see the process. So yes, I want to overlay it. Okay. So there's the process. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to import this into the Eagle Board import widget in chili pepper so I'm gonna go find my mirror there it is 
Okay, I'm gonna bring it over and just hovering over chili pepper, it understands that it's part of a, that it's an eagle board that's gonna bring it right into that. So as you can see, the minute you bring it in, what it's going to do, takes a second, but what it's gonna do, it's gonna give you a render of the board, okay? And here, you get some nice pop-ups of the pads and the circuits. Now, the interesting thing is, Eagle Board import facility, or widget I should say, believes this is the top layer, when in fact it's really the bottom because you had to create a mirror. I know, a little confusing, but it solves the problem. So, if I go over here again and just remind you of what the circuit is I want it to look like when it's finished, here's the circuit, and as you can see, I'm going to get exactly that circuit. Whereas if I had not mirrored it, I originally got this circuit, and as you can see, that's not correct. Okay, so I've run the import. I've made sure the board layer is selected to top. Uh, the widget will either default to the only layer that's on the board. These are single layer boards. I'm not doing anything too complicated. If not, you can go in and select it. But as you can see here, I only have the top choice. Now, the other thing that I like to do, which makes life a lot easier in my opinion, is I like milling my boards with an end mill. And I'll use the same end mill for my trace milling, my hole drilling, and my actual cutout milling. So if I use a 0.6 millimeter end mill, I'm going to inflate the milling path by three, which is half the size of the, of the end mill. Scroll down a little bit. If I was doing SMD boards, then I would use a different uh, a setting, but obviously I'd have to go back to a V-bit for SMDs, but the nature of their paths being so much smaller. That's another video. Um, the rest of the settings I'll take as defaults, although I will change this to be consistent, just so that um, all of the settings are using the same, the same values. I'll then go over to the G-code. I'll tell it the depth of my milling traces. This is a default of 0.1, which is deep enough. I like that. This is the other part, the feed rates and all of that works fine. Um, my clearance, one millimeter. I used to use five, but one's good enough. Drilling holes, I'm gonna use the board depth. I could specify my own. Here's the other key thing. I'm gonna have my hole diameter, my maximum hole diameter be the size of my end mill, 0.6. What that's going to do is if I have a 0.8 or a 1.0 hole to drill, it's actually going to get milled and not drilled, and I'll show you that too. Really cool. Feed rate, I'm going to leave to the default. Diameter for the cutting out of the board, again, I don't want to change tools, so I'm going to keep it at 0.6. I'm going to change the depth of my board. This particular board is 1.5. Not all boards are the same. For those of you that have done this in the past, you'll know that there's always minute differences. I also like to take smaller step downs just so that I don't stress the bit out. So I'll drop it to 0.3. It'll give me five passes with my final pass being a 0.3 millimeter cut, which is fine. All right, feed rate for that, 100 millimeters. And then again, as you can see, the code will get generated for it right here. But what we'll do is our final step is we'll send the code to the workspace. And as we do that, what you're gonna get back now is the actual tool paths. So not only do you get the depths for the end mill, for the, uh, I'm sorry, for the milling out of the board, but you'll also get where all the holes are going. And the other thing you'll notice, like here, here's a bigger hole. We'll pull it, let me see if I can zoom into this a little bit for you so we can show that. As you see how it's actually going to spin the bit. It's not going to just drill down, it's going to spin the bit to make it a little bigger. So now I don't have to change my bit. Even though the G code that Chili Peller is going to create, it's going to give me pauses with opportunity to change a tool. I'm not going to, I'm just going to tell it to keep on going and use the same tool. Now at this point, everything looks good, you're all set. Now all you would do is go ahead and connect to your to your uh, CNC router. In this case, I'm not connected. This is a separate machine, so I'm not actually going to run it. But had all I had to do, if I was connected, was go to my G code and hit play. And as a result, I would have gotten the perfect board, which would be this guy here. And as you can see, I'll zoom back out a little bit. You can see 
I get all the same pathing, all the same settings, all everything in the same hole. Easy enough to do. Again, let me go back to my final output, and as you can see here, the quality. This is when I was generating G, uh, code directly from Eagle. This is the results from Chili Pepper. Now, mind you, before I did the mirror, this was an exact out of the box run. This is what it mirrored, and you can see the results. Much better cut, much better mill. So, give it a try. Let me know if you like this. If you do, click the thumbs up. And uh, hope you enjoy this. If you uh, have any other questions, let me know. I'm having a lot of fun with this. Thanks. Bye.